Today on the show, we're going to be taking a look at the death of Superman. Hey guys, welcome back to Comageddon TV, where all geek culture collides. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Alright guys, as I said today, we're taking a look at the death of Superman. I figured uh, it would be the perfect time to go over this classic read, since, of course, later this year, DC is coming out with the Death of Superman animated movie. This isn't Superman Doomsday. This is actually the Death of Superman. Uh, however, it's going to differ from the, its comic book counterpart in that it's going to have uh, Green Lantern, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, uh, Cyborg, Batman, Flash, and uh, a few others. That were, uh, in fact, actually, I believe Martian Manhunter is going to be in it as well, uh, even though he's not listed here. Uh, he will be in it as far as I know. Let me go ahead and adjust that so that you guys can see. All right. Um, and in this movie, as you guys recall, in The Death of Superman, a uh, few characters who played key roles in it were Blue Beetle. Uh, Booster Gold, who actually named Doomsday. Uh, Guy Gardner, who had a yellow power ring at the time. Um, Fire and Ice, as well as uh, Bloodwind. Now, the thing about Bloodwind in this issue, in this comic series, is he was actually Martian Manhunter. Uh, something happened, and made Martian Manhunter believe that he was actually Bloodwind for a time. Uh, Bloodwind was trapped inside of a crystal, I believe, or something like that. Um, very cool character. He doesn't get a lot enough love. Uh, this series actually introduced me to Bloodwind. There he is right there. Very cool character. He has a lot of the same powers as Superman, plus he's a necromancer. Uh, he gets his powers from voodoo, uh, voodoo gems and crystals and stuff like that. Very cool character. Uh, they really need to bring him back into the DC Universe, along with so many others from back in the day. And I mean, just look at this artwork. You don't really see artwork like this anymore. It's just... See, like right there. That artwork is amazing. You don't see much artwork like that anymore. It's just... And here's where Booster Gold actually gave the monster his name. Uh, trouble isn't the word, Superman. I'm telling you right now. It's like Doomsday is here. So they really should have incorporated... I really wish they would have used this version of the Justice League... In the new movie, I can understand why they didn't. They're trying to build their uh, animated universe. And they're keeping with the New 52 uh, designs. So they're kind of merging the pre-New 52 universe with the New 52. Uh, character, the uh, people who are, will be playing uh, characters in the movie... Nathan, Nathan Fillion will reprise his role as Green Lantern. Matt Lantern Lanter will be Aquaman. Rosario Dawson will be Wonder Woman. Uh, Rain Wilson as Lex Luthor. Jerry O'Connell as Superman. Uh, Rebecca Romaine as Lois Lane. Um, in fact, I believe as it was mentioned in the uh, previews, Jerry O'Connell and Rebecca Romaine are actually married in real life. So that'd be uh, Shamar Moore as Cyborg, who has played Cyborg uh, in all of the new 52 animated movies. Jason O'Mara as Batman. Christopher Gorham as Flash. Patrick Fabian as Hank Henshaw, which is going to be really cool. Uh, Rock Rocky Carroll as Silas Stone. The fact that we're getting Hank Henshaw, and this is going to be a two-part movie. Two-part movie that it's going to be the death of Superman in one film, 
And then in the next film, it's going to be the reign of the Superman. They really could have almost made it a trilogy, a three-part movie. Because the reign of the Superman is such an iconic uh, miniseries that they could have had it led into so many other things. They could have had it lead into uh, Emerald Twilight. Because as we all know, in Reign of the Superman, Hank Henshaw blew up Coast City, which directly led caused Hal Jordan to go insane and become Parallax. Mongol, the first Mongol, uh, you could have used that to introduce Mongol into this animated universe. Could have even led into Batman Nightfall. Because that Batman Nightfall did take place, I believe, to almost right after Emerald Twilight. Maybe not right after, but shortly after Emerald Twilight. Because it was still Bruce Wayne and uh, Tim Drake uh, in the uh, Funeral for a Friend storyline. And uh, the morning after. But I really hope, and I was talking to John about this as well. They need to have, as long as they make the movie end like this, we will be okay with it. That right there is an iconic scene. And what's even more iconic than that are these pages here. That... That needs to be the end of the movie. Like I said, you don't get artwork like this anymore. I have had this uh, trade since since it came since it was released. I believe this was actually released in '93. Uh, the story itself was '92. Uh, yeah, Cop cover copyright 1993. Uh, originally published in single magazine form as Superman Man of Steel 17, 18, 19, Superman 73, 74, 75, Adventures of Superman 496, 497, Action Comics 683, 684, and Justice League America 69. Copyright 1992, 1993, DC Comics, all rights reserved. Um, this is my original the original one uh, my mom bought this for me uh, I think for Valentine's Day uh, in 93 somewhere around there as you can see it's not in that great a condition uh, I used it to trace a lot <laughs> as a kid um, I actually after I got this I took it with me to school and I was reading it in class and my teacher took it away from me and called it disgusting. <laughs> my mom went down to the school, got the comic back from her. And then, years later when I had my tattoo studio, I had my comics at the studio. And my former business partner at the time, after, after I left, before I could get all my stuff together... He confiscated all my comics and gave them to his brother-in-law, which kind of pissed me off. But I managed to get it back. I had to do some trading for it. Uh, but this is still the same, the same one I got way back in '93. Um, <clears throat> the writers of the story include Dan Jurgens, Jerry Ordway, Louis. Louise Simonson and Roger Stern. Pencilers John Bogdanov. John Bogdanov. Tom Grummet, Jackson Geis, and J Dan Jurgens. Uh, Inkers Brett Breeding. Rick Burchett, Doug Hazelwood. Dennis Jank. Dennis Rodi Denise Rodier. And so on. Uh, Dan Jurgens is interesting to note because he had plans for a certain character in this comic all the way back in 93. Didn't uh, He was a minor character through the funeral for a friend in the morning after. 
um, played a kind of a mediocre size role. I won't say he was a small character, but he was, you know, he, he, he was, he had an important role. Um, just not a big one. Uh, and there he is right there, Mitch Anderson. He was the kid who uh, Doomsday destroyed his house. He was the one who thought Guy Gardner was a lot cooler than Superman. He thought Superman was a total dweeb. And eventually, after Superman gave his life to stop Doomsday and save his family, Mitch came around and uh, became a big fan of Superman and kind of took on almost Bruce Wayne's role in the uh, Batman v Superman movie uh, at the end, you know, where you know Bruce said he failed him and all that. That was pretty much how Mitch was represented throughout the funeral for a friend and the morning after storylines. And... <clears throat> What's important about Mitch is not just his role in the death of Superman, but eventually, in 1998, around there, he made another appearance in Superman number 140 and 141 as the superhero outburst. Uh, if you don't know, or it is, no, it was 171, I believe. I'm sorry, I got Incredible Hulk 140 and 141 mixed up with Superman. <laughs> of course, for those of you who don't know, Incredible Hulk 140 was the first cameo appearance of Wolverine, and 141 was the first full-on appearance of Wolverine. But anyway, if you don't know much about Outburst and the Superman of America, we have a video on the channel. It's one of our earlier videos, so go ahead and check that out. But at this time, this was a very important comic. Um, <clears throat> it can't the original Death of Superman, which is this one right here. The first printings came in a black bag, and then. The one directly after, I can't remember which one, came in a white bag. It's the one where Superman is in the afterlife, pretty much fighting for his soul. His and Pa Kent's souls. Uh, but this was such an iconic work. They... <clears throat> Superman and Lois were engaged. They weren't married yet. And in the series, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, because of this, uh, they had to push back Lois and Clark's wedding because they didn't want Lois and Clark to get married on the show before they got married in the comic. And it just so happened that at the time this came out, nothing else happened in the world. So this was all over the news all over the radio, covered on every single station. It, it was just, it was amazing. And the news, when it was revealed, Reign of Superman was coming. Reign of the Superman, I'm sorry. When the Reign of the Superman was coming, the news was actually the first to break the story that there were going to be four new Supermen. They didn't know at the time... If they were going to take over for Superman permanently, or it, or what. But I remember the story. I, I remember what I was doing. I was sitting in my grandparents' living room, watching the news with them, when the story broke that there was going to be four new Supermen. And my, my child mind was just blown. Uh, so, the, for those of you who don't know... The four new Supermen became Hank Henshaw, the cyborg Superman, who most people thought was Superman Reborn, or, uh, only made into a cyborg. Uh, there was the Man of Steel, 
John Henry Irons, who embodied the spirit of Superman. There was the Eradicator, which actually thought he was Superman for a time. Uh, and even Guy Gardner got along with that Superman. And then there was the Metropolis Kid, Superboy. But don't call him Superboy. He's Superman. Uh, the younger version of Superman, the clone of Lex Luthor and Superman uh, that we eventually later found out. Connor Kent, uh, although he's not in comics anymore, I kind of wish they hope they bring him back at some point. But all four of those characters got their start right here because of the death of Superman. Uh, and it's revealed in Superman Hunter Prey, Doomsday's Origins. Um, but yeah, I really wish in this new movie... Well, first, let's go back to the beginning. These panels here, which lead into the death of Superman... They weren't a part of any one comic. Uh, during this time, in Superman and Justice League and Action Comics and Adventures of Superman and all that, each one of those stories would end with a panel of a green fist punching metal. Just this part here. This went on for months. Doomsday is coming was the tagline went on for months and months. The build-up was amazing. Dan Jurgens is is a master of build-up. Uh, we don't really get much of his art and writing anymore like we used to. We still get some, but not not nearly as epic and amazing as this was. And eventually each panel, the glove begins to tear, and then you see a bare hand. And Krakoom! Doomsday breaks through, and our first image of Doomsday was this. And we don't see him again after that until this scene right here and this is the scene that depicts what doomsday is about there he is standing in the middle of the wilderness one hand tied behind his back outstretches his hand for a little canary to land in it and he just crushes it and he laughs Um, and during the uh, Super Nintendo video game, The Death and Return of Superman, this was a big part of it. Uh, I forget what these things were called. Uh, they weren't really metahumans. They, I think they were underworlders or something like that. Uh, each level you had to fight underworlders until eventually you get to Doomsday. And then after Doomsday, you eventually fight uh, Hank Henshaw and the other Superman and all that. And that was my favorite game to play, even though I could barely get past the first couple levels. It was so damn hard. But here we have the Justice League at this time. Uh, this was Justice League International. Okay, you have... You have Guy Gardner, you have Fire, and Blue Beetle, you have Booster Gold, you have Ice, Bloodwind, um, you have Maxima, uh, for those of you who don't know who Maxima is, she she's a very unusual character. Sometimes she's a hero when she's trying to win over Superman to be her king. Other times she's a villain when she's obsessed with Superman and wants revenge against him. 
it, it just depends on what the writer wants to do with her. She's pretty much an alien version of Wonder Woman. Um, and she doesn't take no for an answer. Uh, also included in this story... Uh, let's see. I believe... Alan Scott was in the movie as well. Or not in the movie. In the comic as well. Uh, and he was listed as Green Lantern at this time. I believe. I could be wrong. Uh, but I believe Alan Scott does appear some point see like splash pages like that you don't get artwork like that anymore it's just it's iconic is what it is iconic okay maybe I'm maybe I was wrong maybe uh, Alan Scott uh, there's the Guardian. Uh, no, it's not Jimmy Olsen, like in Supergirl. It's a clone of the original Guardian. Maybe Alan Scott was in a different issue. That's right, he was in one of the Reign of the Superman comics. That's where I'm getting mixed up. And this version of Lex Luthor was actually a clone of Lex Luthor, a younger ver a younger clone of Lex Luthor, with his mind, with Lex Luthor's mind, and he portrayed himself as the original Lex Luthor's son. Uh, this Supergirl was not Kara Zor-El, or Kara Zor-El. I mean, it was actually an alien shapeshifter. right there this panel back in the day this panel really really confused me because I wasn't aware that this wasn't uh, the real Supergirl it was a alien shapeshifter and this Bibbo made appearances before this but none of them were so as big and during the reign of the Superman storyline he actually dressed kind of like Superman, only in uh, blue sweatpants with red shorts over the top and a uh, Superman t-shirt that kind of showed his gut. Uh, but this really made Bibbo famous. I really hope they showed this scene right here in the new movie. Uh, that's also a pretty iconic scene. this scene here very nice just I really wish we got more old-school Dan Jurgens artwork like this still I mean it's just I can't get over it that is Superman I mean, yeah, you got other artists who do a good job with Superman and all that, but no one quite did Superman like Dan Jurgens. It's an amazing story, amazing artwork. Led into so many other amazing stories stories changed the changed comics forever uh, after this death was never the same in comics superheroes would always come back uh, the only ones who never did were you know Uncle Ben um, Sue Dibney uh, characters like that that changed 
the course of a character's history. Uh, but other superheroes and villains, after this, they would always come back. It may have taken a while, but they always came back. I really hope DC does this animated movie perfectly, or as close to perfect as you can, given the cast of characters they're using and the art style they're using. I really wish they would have gone with the Dan Jurgens style. Uh, that would have been epic, but I can understand why they didn't. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, and something else, the new Death of Superman movie is going to be nothing like Superman Doomsday. Uh, with Superman Doomsday, that was really the introduction of the DC animated universe. They tried to keep the Superman animated series art style a little bit for the most part um, and keep it within the super uh, the DC animated universe like Batman the animated series, Superman the animated series, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited. And they tried to contain it within that universe and they had a small budget, so they couldn't really do an all-out Death of Superman, Death and Return of Superman storyline. So they merged a lot of the characters. They merged Eradicator, Henshaw, and Superboy into the Superman clone. Uh, the battle with Doomsday was eh, is okay. It wasn't as epic as I would have liked. Let's hope they do a better job with this movie. So anyway, guys, there you have it. The Death of Superman trade paperback. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoy the movie when it comes out uh, later this year. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the like, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you again real soon. Take care.